Hello, Dr. from Portainer, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to deploy Portainer on an IBM cloud running a Kubernetes cluster. All right, so for this, we first have to make sure we have our prereqs in place. You have to have an IBM cloud account. You have to install the IBM cloud client and the respective plugins in order to access your Kubernetes cluster. And finally, you have to have kubectl installed on your machine. Right, we're all gonna see how this works uh, throughout the tutorial. So first thing is to, after you have your IBM account, make sure you log in. I have Bitwarden here to help me manage my passwords. So I log into the IBM cloud account and I can right away have access to all the services that the IBM cloud um, provides. So I'm gonna start by creating a resource and I'll type in here, Kubernetes. And I can select the first Kubernetes service. Now there's something quite interesting about the IBM cloud. You can have a free tier of a Kubernetes cluster. It's a small little cluster, but just more than enough for you to be able to use uh, this cluster on the IBM cloud and test, well, deploying Portainer on this IBM uh, free tier Kubernetes cluster or on a standard uh, Kubernetes cluster provided by the IBM cloud is the same. The deployment is the same. The installation of Portainer will be exactly the same. Okay, so let me start here by um, the free pricing plan. I'm going to call this cluster Portainer demo. And I'll leave it in the default resource group. I'll click on create. Now, mind you, this can take anything between 10 to 20 minutes, sometimes more. Um, because it's a free tier Kubernetes cluster, obviously, there isn't much of a priority for the deployment of this cluster. So it'll, again, take some time. Make sure that in the meantime, you have a cup of coffee, you, you, you watch a Netflix episode of your favorite series, well, anything that you want. Because, uh, yeah, it can take, again up to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna pause the video for now and as soon as my Kubernetes cluster is ready, I'll come back so we can continue. Okay, I'm back. Our cluster is almost finished. As you can see, it's finalizing the um, deployment of the workers. So we can already have access to the Kubernetes cluster via the kubeconfig file. So this is when we start um, working on the prereqs. So if you look here on the right-hand side of the dashboard, you'll see log into your cluster. And there's a set of links. You can use the IBM Cloud Shell, but in this case, we want to access the cluster directly from our machine. So for that, we need to install, as I had mentioned previously, the IBM Cloud Client and kubectl. Okay, so if we go into Docs, you will see that it, it, this documentation points to how to deploy the plugins, assuming you already have the IBM uh, CLI client already installed, which isn't the case. So you first have to install the IBM Cloud CLI. Once this is done, then you can go back to installing the plugins. And I selected installing from shell. I think it's just an easier method of doing the installation. If you're using uh, Mac OS, this is also an option. If you're using, well, PowerShell, it's also a way to do it. So there's options for all the op main operating systems here. Um, so you can use the IBM Cloud Client on your workstation. Once this is done, you can come back and continue with the installation of the plugins that will enable access to your Kubernetes cluster. And the plugins are the three I had shown previously, uh, Container Service, Container Registry, and observe service, right? So this is the prereq from the IBM Cloud client. After this is done, you have to also make sure you have kubectl installed. Because I use Linux and it's uh, Linux Mint, I installed kubectl in my case with Snap, Snap Package Manager, but you have to make sure that, well, you're using 
um, if you're using Linux, which package manager is the one that's appropriate for you to uh, deploy kubectl or whatever other operating system you are using. You will need kubectl um, on the shell. Right. Once that is done, and it, well, I'll show you quickly how I installed kubectl using snap. It's snap install kubectl classic. Okay, with this, you how you can install kubectl on your machine. If I hit enter, you'll see, well, first I need the authorization as super user. Okay, and it's already installed, right? Fine. So again, make sure you go through the steps I've just showed here. Have the IBM Cloud CLI tool installed and then install the plugins to access your Kubernetes cluster. Once that is done, then we can finally download the config file for this Kubernetes cluster. So if you just go here and click on copy to clipboard, you can go back to your terminal. Let me just make sure that my um, .cube folder is clean. I'm gonna remove any other config file I have here. And I'm going to um, download the cube config file for this Kubernetes cluster. It's also important that you do a login to the IBM Cloud. In my case, all you, in this case, all you have to do is type in IBM Cloud login. Type in your email address. I used my personal email address for this, and your password. Um, because I use Bitwarden, it makes it easier for me to manage these passwords. But well, if you have it written down somewhere, whatever the method is best for you to store and manage passwords uh, is fine. It's authenticating. So yeah, first make sure you log in via the terminal uh, into the IBM cloud. So then you can finally, well, it, it, you can define a region if you want to, you can skip this. Also, I've skipped it. And now I can finally paste the command here to download the kubeconfig file for this cluster running on the IBM cloud service. So this is just the beginning because we have some additional steps here in order to deploy Portainer. The first one is to check which storage class is available on this Kubernetes cluster. In order to do that, you can just type in kubectl get storage class and you will see that this type of, and you will see that there isn't any storage class defined here for this Kubernetes cluster. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enable the local storage storage class. Um, the scripts that you that I will run here, the YAML, and the YAML definitions that I'm gonna run here with kubectl will be available in the description of this video and also on the blog post of this video. So the first, YAML I'm going to run is the one that enables the local storage class on this Kubernetes cluster. And with this, I can start the deployment of Portainer. Let's check if we now have a storage class. Yes, we do. There's, there's a couple of more details here that um, I will show you are important in order to properly deploy Portainer. I'm gonna go straight into Portainer Business Edition uh, and check for install Portainer BE, a Portainer server installation on a Kubernetes environment, self-managed infrastructure, and I see that I need data persistence. That's why I enabled the local storage. But not only that, I have to make sure that the local storage I am going to use to deploy Portainer is uh, set as default. For this, we're gonna have to patch the local storage uh, class definition with this simple here set of instructions with kubectl. So I'm gonna copy the first part of this kubectl uh, command here. I know that the local uh, storage, I know that the storage class that I wanna use is called local storage. And finally, I'm gonna finish with the rest of the parameters here copy and paste it back into my terminal right so again you have to make sure 
that the storage that you're going to use or storage class is set as default so portainer can be deployed appropriately you can only have for a portainer one default storage class if you have more than one default storage class defined on this kubernetes cluster you won't be able to deploy portainer so just make sure you're using only one storage class set and patched as default okay so we're all set in terms of data persistence and now we can deploy portainer i um prefer the yaml manifest node port method so i just copied the command here from the, the documentation expose via node port using a yaml manifest and um you will see that portainer will start uh, being created into as a namespace and the service is also going to be created within this cluster now um, if you run cube cuddle get pod in the portainer namespace let me just put a space here you will see it's pending and why is it pending because i haven't defined a persistent volume or a persistent volume claim for a pertainer. I'm using local storage. So I have to do those two steps now before pertainer can continue its deployment on this Kubernetes cluster. Again, I'm going to run two YAML definitions here that I will um, cut paste in the description of the video. The first is the persistence volume, the persistent volume claim. The first one is the persistent volume claim. And the second one is the persistent volume per se, the pertainer. Okay, and once this is finished, I can run again a check to see if pertainer is being deployed appropriately with the dash W, which stands for like watch. Uh, and it's watching the container creation. And you'll see that like in a matter of seconds, it'll be up and running. And there you go. Now Pertainer is up and running uh, in this Kubernetes cluster uh, being hosted on the IBM cloud. Right. So let's see, there are some steps that are required. Uh, the IBM cloud CLI tool on your terminal, uh, cube cuddle, uh, enabling the local storage because this cluster does not come with any storage defined. Uh, enabling the PVC and PV for Portainer so you can finally deploy Portainer on this cluster. That done, we can finally access Portainer from our browser. Let's go there and see if it's up and running. Now, it's important to mention that Portainer running on Kubernetes, and because we're using uh, a the latest business edition version of Portainer, will run on um https but oh wait hold on first i have to check the public ip of this kubernetes cluster the worker node is this is the public ip okay i'm gonna copy and now paste this here and the port for kubernetes is 30779 so again, make sure you type in HTTPS because we're going to access Portainer via a secure port, the public IP of this Kubernetes cluster, and column H and column 30779. And we should soon see this message is your connection is not private. This is because uh, Portainer is running um, on a self-signed certificate in terms of HTTPS access method, which is fine. I can click on advanced and proceed. And I will very soon see our interface to define the first admin user. And I can create this user. No, I'm not going to save the password here. I need to input a license because I'm using the business edition. So just give me a second. I will be back. Let me just get the license key here. Obviously, 
And here I am with Portuna deployed on a Kubernetes cluster running on an IBM cloud. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial as you uh, just saw. There are some little things that you have to make sure you do um, beforehand or during the deployment of your Kubernetes cluster and Portainer, but they're not hard. They will be all be available in the description of this video and the corresponding blog post of this tutorial. So I hope you enjoy this. Thank you very much.